Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 6. We open on Erendir, who is trot trotting along in the woods. He's following some orcs who are walking in broad daylight. I feel like last season the orcs were a little bit more vampire-like in their complete avoidance of the sun, but I guess they realize that they won't instantly disintegrate, so love that for them. Uh-oh, Erendir gets ambushed, but not to worry. What are three orcs to one elf? Erendir goes through one of their pockets, and it just so happens to be the correct pocket of the correct elf. That's lucky. And he finds a scrap of map. I too always carry with me a drawing of my destination to help with um, navigation. Meanwhile, in Eregion, rings of men, why do you defy me? You aren't even sentient. So prideful. Oh, throws the failed ring at an innocent mouse. Again, more silver, more mithril. Sorry, boss. Dwarves missed the restock. So why haven't you contacted customer service? We tried, but we just get put on hold for forever. Do I have to do everything around here? Someone's a real grumpy pants lately. Kelly Belly looks affronted. What's your name again? Hasn't this little handful of elves been working side by side with him like 24 seven? He didn't know their identities before he chose them for this project and then didn't bother to learn their names after? You don't remember? Okay, just a senior moment. <laughs> Uh, um, of course I remember. I was obviously just testing to see if you remember, duh. Luckily, Sauron is on hand to save Kelly Belly from this awkward moment. Everybody take five. Now I remember her name. Ain't that just the way? How could you be expected to remember that? You've got enough going on. It's been a day. Like earlier, I could have sworn I left my hammer right there. Uh, the hammer that is right there? Haha, <laughs> yup. Wow. See what I mean? It's just one of those days. You've just been so locked in. It happens. Honestly, I'm pooped. Well, bad luck. Your peeps want to see you. <sighs> I don't have time for them. I've got rings to finish. Cool, cool. Oh, but before you go, um, can you check on our restock of Mithril? You got it, boss. Ominous music. Sauron heads out to where a handful of elves is gathered. I didn't realize when he said that his people wanted to see him, they meant like right this second or outside the door. Was there like a post on their local residence message board telling them that like this is the time and place to gather? Or have they all just been kind of like slowly accumulating like a Occupy a Region situation. Listen up, Kelly Belly is busy, so he's putting me in charge. What's up? Show him. Christine takes Sauron to the gate and starts explaining to him what the problem is. I don't know who she was talking to when she said show him since she is now currently showing him. This gate is usually overrun with tourists, but all of a sudden, nobody. We sent folks out to check it out, see if the road was blocked. No one's come back besides this guy. We cut to a dead body with a message carved in its chest. That's super gross. Bury him and show no one. Should we tell Kelly Belly? No, no one is allowed to bother him, not even the team. You mean we're all fired? Right, so. <laughs> is this why he forgot my name? There, there, he's just going through it right now, okay? Just give him some space and pray that he finishes his work before it finishes him. Is it clear to anyone in Eregion why it's super urgent to finish these rings? Like, what's the emergency? Can I trust you to make sure everyone leaves Kelly Belly alone? Of course, but um, back to that dead body that for some reason I knew about, even though I only just left Kelly Belly like a minute ago, cause I'm now in charge of everything in Eregion because I'm the only elf character that anyone recognizes. Yeah, so um, uh, what did the carving say? Where is he? To be honest, I thought that Sauron was asking her, where is he? And I was like, who? And then I realized the episode is called, Where is he? And that's when I realized that that's what the carving said. Where is he? Sauron gazes out at the horizon. Meanwhile, evil Ned and Galpal are having dinner. So back when you were torturing me, I got the impression you were um a bit obsessed with Sauron. Not judging, mind you. He's just got that riz. You think we're the same? Ha! Huh. You gave in to him. I didn't. Sure, Jan. I'm sure that's uh, super impressive or whatever, but uh, everyone gives in to him eventually. His eye bores a hole and the rest of him slithers in. His eye? Already? He's just so irresistible. He makes the world technicolor. After that, without him, everything is gray. What did he promise you? An army. You want to know what he promised me? Nope. Kids. Well, I guess we both got what we wanted then. Yep. Man of his word, that Sauron. And that is why we have to destroy him. Wait, what? I can help. How could you possibly help, Orc? There she goes again, being a bigot. Um, we prefer Uruk. Evil Ned breaks out Morgoth's pointy crown. I thought, lots of rumors, but I was there when Sauron remade it. I was there when he knelt to be crowned. And I was there when I stabbed him. Um, then why did you come back? So I was looking for you. Me? 
Heard a rumor myself about some fancy new rings y'all made. I was thinking maybe your rings plus this crown might kill Sauron for real? I know he's hiding in a region and I know you know about it. And that's why I cleverly sent a dead body with the words, where is he carved on the chest? Halbrand is Sauron, isn't he? Okay, so you know who he is and where he is. Remind me why it was necessary to carve where is he on the chest of that guy? Eregion's depending on you to set aside your pride. I'd say Eregion's in big trouble then. Evil Ned locks her up, but like tenderly and gentlemanly. Meanwhile, in Numenor, Elendil is on trial for inciting violence and for treason. These crimes warrant a sentence of death. Elendil's daughter looks not entirely happy about this, so that's very heartening. But instead, we're gonna let him go. Provided he renounces his crimes and recognizes me as the true ruler. So I looked up the word renounce and the dictionary says that it means formally declare one's abandonment of a claim, right, or possession. So Elendil has to abandon his claim on his own crimes? Surely you want him to claim his crimes, no? Elendil, do you renounce your crimes? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I do. Do you accept Farazhan as king? No. Say it louder. Never! I'm Team Muriel for life! The only traitor here is you! Well, now what do we do with him? You've done enough. Again, Elendil's daughter doesn't look entirely pleased, which is very touching. I think we should speak ominously about fate and such while I point at this book, yes? Dun, dun, dun! Meanwhile, Nori is screaming. Oh, just kidding. Great value Gandalf was just catastrophizing. Snorri! Snoring? Who's snoring? Abe Lincoln. Did you say Abe Lincoln? No, I say Abe Lincoln. I said, hey, Blinken. I saw something. Secret fire shows us things. Does it show us things that will be? Or only might be? It shows tomorrow's clouds as clear as yesterday's sunshine. So it gives 100% accurate weather forecasts? How do I learn to master it? Secret fire has no master. Secret fire needs no master. But then how can I use it? You've failed at literally everything so far. If you fail at this, that's it. Great pep talk, Tom. What do I do? Follow me! Meanwhile in Galaxy's Edge, have you considered moving? To... Anywhere. My folks move around once a month. I was born here and by golly I mean to die here. Oh, by the by, under that tree, there's an unmarked grave from my hubby. <laughs> So, it's up to me. Sorry, what's up to you? If I turn myself in, maybe I can save Samantha Wise. Cut to Samantha Wise and her new boyfriend. So why do they call you nobody? Well, my parents didn't name me until two years ago. Folks had to call me something till they made up their mind. Did you have lizard for supper? Maybe. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. Back to Nori. Gotta turn myself in. But the whole world might be at stake. How many times have you told me that Hobo Dude is important? Few more than a rabbit's dozen, I suppose. Harfits are just so charming, aren't they? Well, you ought to know. If you keep saying a thing, I just start believing it. So because Samantha Wise is extremely gullible, Nori should take that as evidence that what she says is true. I say we fight for it. Sorry, fight for what? Meanwhile, Great Value Gandalf and Tom out in Arizona. Bad wizard found his stick. Time for you to find yours. Wow. How do I choose? You'll find your stick only when the vision of your heart is single to the service of the secret fire. Huh? But there's a ton. No rush, take your time. But you see, I had a vision of my friend being in trouble and I feel like I should help her. Many that die deserve life. Any that live deserve death. Who are you to give it to them? I feel like this hit different when Gandalf said it to Frodo. Something about it being used to dissuade killing rather than dissuade saving, I don't know. Look, once I save her, I'll come back. Nope, sorry pal, can't do both, you gotta choose. Didn't you say he has like all the time in the world to choose? Are you sure I can't do both? Whole world's at stake, you're gonna let everyone die? She's my friend though. Allow me to explain the trolley problem. And then Tom disappears. What? Meanwhile in Casa Doom, the dwarves are hard at work. I'm pretty sure one of the guys says, put your beard into it, but the caption said, put your bread into it. And I'm not really sure which is funnier. Dwarves are wheeling piles of gold to the king. Coins, chalices, etc. Wait, so are they digging for treasure? I thought they were mining for natural deposits of gold. Durin approaches the throne. You summoned me, father? Nope, he did. Sauron! Dun, dun, 
done. I see the rings are serving you well. They're serving someone, all right. Cool, cool. Anyway, I'm here because Oregion is about to be invaded, so we need more mithril ASAP so we can make more rings. Which will stop the invasion? How much you want for it? Nuh uh, no way. We're not. What are you offering? How about timber? The king is unimpressed. Not into it? Fair enough. How about something better? Dad, I think we should talk about this. No need. I've made up my mind. Sorry. No can do. Sauron sees a Balrog in the fire. So did he make the fire do that? Or was the fire giving Sauron a message? Like, hey dude, psst, over here, FYI, there's a Balrog down here. And Sauron's like, yeah, thanks fire. Always count on you. Okie dokie, no worries. Just thought I'd ask. Have a nice life. Nothing suspicious about an envoy seeking aid to avoid invasion. Being told no and then being like, yeah, no problem, bye. Thank God, Pops. I really thought you were off your rocker for a sec. I've never been more on my rocker in my life. Don't worry, he'll be back. Back? Yeah, didn't you hear him? Invasion. And you know what we've got? The Mithril military. We're about to be rolling. Are you nuts? The whole world's nuts, son. That's why we gotta choke it. What? Dad, take off the ring. Afraid not. Belongs to me. No, you belong to it. Unless you want to prove me wrong and take it off. I don't gotta prove nothing. Durin tries to take the ring by force. The ring makes evil noises and the king flings Durin away. I mean, how did you think that would go? Cut to, he's left us no choice. Time to peacefully protest and lay down in front of the mine. Oh yeah, that'll stop him. He'd call the whole army down on us. Guess that blow knocked some sense into Durin. Let him. It'll show everyone he's a big meanie that shouldn't be king. It's definitely how monarchy works. That's my dad you're talking about. I love him like a dad. Well, better than a dad, seeing as my actual dad was a piece of shit, but I digress. That dude ain't your dad anymore. Durin walks away. Durin! 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 Oh my god, can you give the man a second? Durin, are you? I can't believe a man's is crying. <laughs> That's still my dad. Manages to squeeze out a tear or two. You've always been an optimist. Has he though? We gotta do something before your dad wrecks himself and everything else. Okay, so far the ring has helped him to find new sun holes and to find more gold deposits to mine. And mining is like dwarves' whole deal. What exactly is he doing that's making you see the doom of all of Casa Doom? Anyway, meanwhile in Numenor, Elendil's daughter's been given the task of explaining to her dad about how he's been sentenced to be eaten by a beastie. They are summoning the sea worm as we speak. Listen, dad, he'll let you go if you just swear fealty to him. Ha, huh. no thank you. <laughs> I can't lose you too. Please, just swallow your pride. Pride? You really don't get it, do you? Yeah, Verizon said you'd say that. That you hate me. Well, that escalated quickly. And that's why I brought Muriel. Where has she been hanging out? What did I tell you last time we talked? I explicitly said go with it. So go with it. Yeah, but going with it makes me feel icky cause, cause I'm on your team. So yeah, no can do. But what if you're wrong? I'd rather die wrong than live embarrassed. Great. What about me? Oh, I'll relax. If the Valar want me to live, then I will. But what if they don't? The sea is always right. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Casa Doom, the dwarves are on the march. Adisa is there, staring at a wall. Look, if you don't move, we'll have to move you by force. Well, you could just go around her. Then Disa unleashes her inner black canary, which does nothing. Well, that was awkward. Yes, it was. Oh, uh, was that meant to scare us or... Uh... No, they are. Oh, sorry, she's not black canary. She's Batgirl. So you managed to summon bats this time, but are you going to be able to do that every time? Because if not, I mean, they're going to come right back and we're back to square one. Anyway, Duran thinks that was super hot. This is only the beginning. They'll be back. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And we'll be ready. Can't wait to see what part two of this plan is. Meanwhile in Wakanda, they're getting ready to choose the new Black Panther. Wait, hang on, sorry, wrong movie. Meanwhile in Numenor, they're summoning the beastie. Do you forsake all earthly authority and accept the judgment of the Valar? See, now would be the time to use renounce. I accept their judgment. Throw him in. Lendil and his daughter exchange heartfelt glances. Release him. His crime was committed in my name. Therefore, I can take his place. 
Not gonna lie, I'm super intrigued by this justice system. Would love to see the law in the books that says, he that committeth treason must be sentenced to death, unless the person that he did it for wants to swap in, in which case they can tote switch. The people are not happy about this idea, even though in theory they hate her enough to want Ferris on his king instead, but whatever. She's right. It's all in there. You have to allow it. It's all in there? What's all in there? Are you saying there's actually a switcheroo law for treason on the books? Is this true? By the letter of the law, yes. Again, would love to see that law. Like, who came up with that? Who thought that was a good idea? So it shall be. No, take me. If we are to walk the path of the faithful, it must be me who takes the first step. It must be I who takes the first step. But so for real, where has Muriel been since the coup? Did they really not even keep her under lock and key? Like, I know she seemed really chill about the whole thing, but like, why take the risk? Anyway, unlike Elendil, who they seem ready to just toss in, they kindly escort Muriel to the water. It appears to be like a shallow pool surrounded by rocks, but I guess the beastie had no issue getting into that little shallow pool, because down she goes. The beastie roars at her. Muriel seems very chill. No one on the surface has any idea what's going on. The Valar have deemed her. The water crashes. Oh, looks like even the beastie didn't want her. He just spat her right back up. Innocent! They witnessed her go into the water and go under for a little bit, and the water splashed a bit, and then she came back up again. Do they have confirmation that there was a beastie involved at all? Hail Muriel, queen of the sea! The people cheering! Wisdom of crowds, am I right? So to recap, what went on this season is that Muriel was going to be crowned queen, and then she wasn't because Farazhan wanted to be king instead. So then she got set aside, and Farazhan's in charge, and then... Um, then Elendil was going to be drowned, but then he wasn't because Muriel was going to be drowned instead. And then Muriel wasn't drowned because she's actually fine and great and innocent. And now she's going to be a queen again. Love a plot cul-de-sac. Anyway, cut to Farazhan and the elf frog getting a vision of glaciers? Mordor? Halbrand? Farazhan is shooketh. Dun, dun, dun. Meanwhile, back at the orc camp. Yes, Halbrand is Sauron. And he's in a region making magic rings. He won't leave till he's done with that project. How does she know he won't leave? Like, at best, that's a reasonable guess? And that gives us a temporary advantage. Us? Unlock me. Oh, baby, I'll unlock you. Oh, you mean unlock the shackles? Why'd you phrase it like that? As we speak, Elrond is heading here from Linden with an army. Again, at best, that's what you hope is happening. But, like, last time you saw him, he was running towards Linden with your ring and no army. And somehow he managed to get back to Linden in the amount of time it took Evil Ned to have dinner with you, so. When he gets here, he'll get Kelly Belly away from Sauron, and then you and I, we're gonna kill Sauron till he's good and dead. And then? The rings. Not the elf ones, obviously. Those nasty other tricksy ones. They have to be destroyed. Yeah, no, I meant, uh, what then for me and mine? I somehow recall you saying something about genociding us. Isn't your king still planning to invade Mordor? You elves think you're so great, but you're doing exactly what Sauron wants. You're just saying stuff to get me to slip up and tell you something. Uh, you already told me everything? <gasps> what? But... Gal looks like she's got a tempest starting up. Gal follows Evil Ned as he tells his dudes to get ready. Um, all of a region might actually already be under Sauron's control, so like, you need us? You don't have nearly enough people. Oh yeah? And he reveals his whole army. Now that you've confirmed Sauron's in a region and you haven't got your ring, uh, we'll take it from here. A region's going down. No, this must be what he wants. Why, because you don't like it? That's convenient. Sauron has no army, so he's lord yours here instead. That's rich coming from the gal who was just bragging about bringing her own army from a region, but her army is nice elves, not nasty orcs, so it's totally different. Take her away. No! This is what Sauron wants! No! We're under attack! Cut to Sauron cutting his palm? Cool. Kelly Belly's chillin', not a care in the world, just sketching away. He hears distant screams. Hmm, maybe I should check it out. Hey lover, make any progress? I thought I heard something. Don't fret my pet, I've got it all under control. I'm gonna check it out anyway. You belong in here. I am so sick of you telling me what to do. He shoves Sauron. Kelly Billy tries to go, but Sauron grabs his arm. Let me go, friend. Sauron does. Fine, go if you want, but when all of mankind dies, it's gonna be your fault. Kelly Billy goes anyway. Sauron decides to take a beat. Anger management training really paying off. Kelly Billy opens the doors and sees everything is fine. And it's daylight now. He's so relieved. For centuries, I tried to make cool stuff, but I couldn't do it. 
Do Valar messengers have ambitions? I came here not because the Valar needed you. I came because I did. And that's meant to make Kelly Belly feel less suspicious? Kelly Belly looks a bit confused, understandably. Look, man, I can't do it. Definitely not without more Mithril. Well, I have a little surprise for you. I may have picked you up a wee bit of Mithril as a treat. Oh, wow. We're so close. Don't give up now, champ. Listen, I swear on my immortal self. Can you do that? Also, are you an immortal messenger or not? I'm getting mixed signals. When they write about this time, the Silmarils will be a footnote compared with the thing we acquired the rights to produce for the screen. I mean, uh, compared with the amazing work we're doing. You can do it! Camera pans over and we see the truth. It's actually nighttime and things are not going great. When Sauron made the illusion, was it necessary to change the time of day? Sauron looks out over the landscape to the army on their doorstep. Excellent. Gal is chained up again and the orcs are firing on a Region. Dun, dun, dun. So much happened in this episode. Um, we learned that Meryl is gonna be queen again, just like she was in the beginning. So, um, yep, that got fixed. Um, we learned that... Oh, that Disa has Batgirl powers. We learned that the sea is still always right. We learned that... Nope, that's all I got. Okay. Well, it's a fantastic episode. So much happened. So much progress has been made. And I cannot wait to see what happens next week.